to worship at the Manning Memorial Chapel on Sunday, November 22nd, 2020, as we celebrate the reign of Christ the King. Let us worship God. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. First reading is from Ezekiel chapter 34, beginning at verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and I will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, 
and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between the sheep and sheep. I will set them over them, one shepherd, one servant, David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of God. Thanks be to God. with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 31 through 41, verse 45 and 46. New Revised Standard Version. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you as a stranger and welcomed you, are naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these 
who are members of my family who did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. And the word became flesh and lived among us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we long for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Through your word written, your word spoken, and your word lived, give us now and throughout our lives glimpses of your kingdom. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The title of this sermon is The End. You may recall a time or a few times when a story is over or a film movie is concluded and at that point, there are these two words, the end. What will be the end of it all? And what visions do we have of the end? Will the end be caused by a nuclear war? Well, ever since the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 6, 1945, the possibility of a nuclear war has become one nightmarish picture of the end of everything that stalks modern times since the 20th century. Images of the damage to humanity and the environment caused by radiation somehow seem to come up in our discourse in the negotiations of superpowers in the movies and books and perhaps even in our individual nightmares. This image of a mushroom cloud causing skin to burn, air, soil, water, and food all contaminated. Is this your picture of the end? Well, a Japanese poet, Toji Sankichi, who lived from 1917 to 1953 and who experienced the bombing of Hiroshima, wrote some poems, and I share an excerpt of one of the poems with you as we consider the end. Perhaps it wasn't the end of the age, but certainly for the survivors of that bomb, it was the end of an era. The poem is entitled August 6th, and it is translated by Karen Thornburgh. Can we forget that flash? Suddenly, 30,000 in the streets disappeared in the crushed depths of darkness. The shrieks of 50,000 died out. When the swirling yellow smoke thinned, buildings split, bridges collapsed, packed trains rested, singed, and a shoreless accumulation of rubble and embers, Hiroshima. Before long, a line of naked bodies 
walking in groups, crying with skin hanging down like rags, hands on chests, stamping on crumbled brain matter, burnt clothing covering hips. Corpses lie on the parade ground like stone images of Jizo, dispersed in all directions. On the banks of the river, lying on top of one another, a group that had crawled to a tethered craft, also gradually transformed into corpses beneath the sun's scorching rays. And in the light of the flames that pierced the evening sky, the place where mother and younger brother were pinned under alive, also engulfed in flames. And when the morning sun shone on a group of high school girls who had fled and were lying on the floor of the armory. City of 300,000. Can we forget that silence in that stillness? The powerful appeal of the white eye sockets of the wives and children who did not return home, that tore apart our hearts. Can it be forgotten? And so in this poem, August 6, the writer describes in vivid language the end of life as it had been before that bomb hit Hiroshima. Perhaps your vision of the end is not quite the same, but perhaps you worry, perhaps I worry deep down that the technology that we now have, which can help humankind, could as easily become the tool of our demise. Today in many churches, a celebration takes place. It is a day when we remember Christ the King and end the liturgical year before we start again at the beginning of the Advent season. The reading earlier from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, provide another vision of the end. The end in this story is a judgment day, a day when humanity is assessed based on their relationship with God and their relationship with others. The person who assesses is the Son of Man who comes in his glory. This Son of Man we understand to be Christ the King, the one who has the power to judge, to assess, to evaluate our lives, all at the end. Before this time of judgment as described in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus also told other stories and shared other things with his disciples. A significant thing that he shared was the certainty of suffering, the certainty of persecution that they would experience, that there would be sorrow before a time of judgment would come when the righteous would receive their reward and when happiness would ensue for those who were in right relationship with God and with their fellow human beings. Jesus, in this parable in Matthew chapter 25, speaks to the criteria for the judgment of the Son of Man, the judgment of Christ the King. It's not how often the person attended church, it's not whether they knew the Ten Commandments and other parts of Scripture by heart. The question that decided the judgment 
had to do with the actions that were taken, not at the end, but during the lifetime, during the times even of suffering. It's not very complicated. The Son of Man, the King, has a kingdom that is different from human kingdoms. God's kingdom focuses on the least, the lowliest, those considered of no account, those often neglected or unremarked, those often unnoticed in society. It doesn't judge as human kingdoms judge, that it is the powerful, the ones that we are closely acquainted with, those who can do us a favor in return, that these are the ones that we should help. No, it is the least and the lowliest. It's different from the standards of the empire, the Roman empire of the time and the empires of this time. God's kingdom will, will follow the importance of those who are least and lowliest. And God not only takes a preferential option for the least and the lowliest, but God identifies totally with those who are vulnerable and who are in need. And so, the right hand of blessing is extended to those who offer food to the hungry, who offer a drink to the thirsty, who visit those who are in prison, who clothe the naked, who regard and respect and offer love and compassion to those who are least and lowliest in the society. And these who are least and lowliest are not just people. When they receive our love and compassion, in this parable, Jesus shows us that he identifies totally with the suffering. And what we have done to the least, to the lowliest, to the stranger, we have done to God. It's a puzzling picture of God, a puzzling picture of the Son of Man, of Christ the King, who presents himself in our lifetime and in our society, in the face and in the person of those who are vulnerable and in need. So whatever we do to the least in the society, we have done to God. Simple acts of caring, nothing too complicated. Something that acknowledges our relationship with God and with each other. Acts of kindness and caring that give expression to our responsibility to take care of each other. And the importance of us regarding, noticing, listening, paying attention to those who are in need. God loves and cares for us, and God calls us also to love and care for God as we care for each other, and especially those who are most vulnerable. The time to do the caring, the time to show compassion is not at the end. The time is now. And in this parable, there's a sense of urgency because the least, the lowliest, the vulnerable are with us now. And in this kingdom of God, we have a vision of a time of justice, a time of peace, a state of mutual support and respect, the time when there will be well-being abundance for all, life in all its fullness at the end of the age. But this kingdom of God is not only at the end of the age. 
We receive glimpses of this reign of God, this kingdom of God, even now. And the parable challenges us to be signs and to be agents of God's reign, even now. As we affirm that relationship with God matters, that our relationships with each other matter, let us open our eyes and let us act in the here and now to help to usher in this reign of God in someone's life today. In so doing, we help to bring an end to the suffering and we collaborate with God in having God's kingdom break in and in having others understand the possibilities that are present even now if each of us would regard the least. I want to share with you an expression by the same poet that we read about, we read from in the beginning. As she spoke not only of the horrors of the bombing of Hiroshima, but of hope of hope and experienced by suffering people in that time. People who had witnessed unspeakable horror, but people who had also witnessed astonishing sacrificial love, love that spoke of the fact that horror, that suffering, that war and enmity do not have the last word that in fact the end is something else. The poem is entitled, Let Us Be Midwives. Sadako Kurihara wrote this poem and it was translated by Richard Myanmar. Let Us Be Midwives an untold story of the atomic bombing. Night in the basement of a concrete structure, now in ruins. Victims of the atomic bomb jammed in the room. It was dark. Not even a single candle the smell of fresh blood, the stench of death, the closeness of sweaty people, the moans. From out of all that, lo and behold a voice, the baby's coming. In that hellish basement, at that very moment, a young woman had gone into labor in the dark without a single match. What to do? People forgot their own pains, worried about her. And then, I'm a midwife, I'll help with the birth. The speaker, seriously injured herself, had been mourning only moments before. And so, new life was born in the dark of that pit of hell. And so the midwife died before dawn, still bathed in blood. Let us be midwives. Let us be midwives, even if we lay down our own lives to do so. The end. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the hungry 
that they may receive food. Your kingdom come, O God. Let us pray for the thirsty, that they will be given something to drink. Your kingdom come, O God. Let us pray for the stranger, that they will be welcomed. Your kingdom come, O God. Let us pray for the naked, that they will receive clothing. Your kingdom come, O God. Let us pray for the sick, that they will receive care. Your kingdom come, O God. Let us pray for those in prison, that they will be visited. Your kingdom come, O God. Let us pray for all who are considered the least and the lowliest, that they may be regarded, cared for, loved, and supported. Your kingdom come, O God. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom, when no one lacks food, health, friendship, justice, and well-being. Your kingdom come, O God. Let us pray that God will strengthen us to respond to the least and the lowliest, as if to God. Your kingdom come, O God. Let us pray for the day when there will be justice, peace, mutual support and respect, well-being and abundance. We pray for the coming of the kingdom of God in the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
this time of worship to a close, let us pray. May God reign in our hearts. May God reign on earth as in heaven. And now to the King of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen.